Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconan, along with Brianna Valeski, and we have Rachel Shasha on the line. She's a trader and blogger at Sassy Options. She's a graduate of both UCLA and USC, and she researches the psychology of the markets and uses that in her trades. Now, I know you asked this, I've asked this before, but who do you cheer for at the USC-UCLA game? Whoever's winning. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I would like to say USC because they're obviously the winners, but UCLA because they're my undergrad. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on, Rachel. We had you on before the flash crash, and uh, you were talking about some spider levels, and you were very, very convinced that we needed to clear. I don't know. It was back in the 200 somewhere. You said, if we don't clear this resistance and we break this support, we're going down, and that turned out to be the scenario. So how did you play it? Talk a little bit about that uh, flash crash Monday, if your systems were working good, and if you made uh, made good use of the opportunities in the market that day. I would like to say that I killed it, but I had no idea we were going that far down, um, and or that we were going to have a flash crash. crash. Also, I was uh, kind of on vacation right at the time that it happened, so I really wasn't trading very much. I was in Miami. Okay. So I kind of missed a lot of it, um, which in some ways is fine because I probably would have tried to buy the dip much sooner. Okay. All right. Well, now, you know, now we're back here live and we have, you know, the, the Fed meeting coming up on Thursday. We just got this incredible consolidation in the market here, probably today, tomorrow and up to it on Thursday. Uh, what are you what are you looking at here for us? To, you know, maybe for an indication that, you know, the worst is over. We're going back up to all time highs or that we got some more work to do on the downside. I mean, my thoughts are we probably have more work to do on the downside. It doesn't mean we go up first, and it doesn't mean that we won't, if whatever the Fed says, won't you know get us higher. But my thinking is we will either uh, test the lows again at some point or surpass them. Um, you know, just kind of like I, I put out a chart like 2011, and I'm not saying this is going to be exactly like 2011, but, you know, I don't think these kind of bottoms after uh, something like, what we experience is going to happen, you know, just like that because of something that says. So I could be wrong, but I think that, you know, even if you do get higher, and I know that a lot of people are looking at levels of 200, 202, 204 on uh, fine. I mean, it's hard not to see those levels. So, you know, even if we get up to those levels, I still think it's probably a sell. Okay, I, I kind of agree. You still got that resistance up there. Really well defined in the, the basis. The uh, December S&P futures up there at uh, just under 1990 here, 1988 area. Uh, I guess we just got to get it out of the way at the beginning of the show. The Goldman Sachs indicator. Now, I know you were turning a little bearish on that as well, uh, based on looking at some of the activity in the options markets. And I thought of you, I almost did a, a trade. Someone gave it an up. Grade. I don't know who it was, and it, they took it over 190, went to like one, and I'm like, okay, I'm wrong, it's over 190, and I looked at the end of the day, and ended up closing well into the 188 handle. Uh, first, could you tell us what you, you know, for people that are new to the show, what your Goldman Sachs indicator is, and is it has any clues for the market? So I like to look at the open interest of it uh, on a weekly basis, and this one's maybe even better because it's a monthly um, open interest, so they're a little bit more steady. Um, for some reason, more times than not, a lot more times than not, uh, the Goldman Sachs, like, if you look at the open interest and you look at the high end of the puts and the high um, call strike, it, it kind of shows you where the range is going to be and mm -hmm. where it's not going to go. It's not going to go underneath the puts, and it's not going to go over the calls. It doesn't work every single time, like during the flash crash, it did not work. But for the most part, it does. So right now, it's actually indicating more bullish looks because um, Bada uh, puts at 185. So, mm. and, so the assumption would be that we are, I would say we will probably go higher or stay where we are. Between now and Thursday. Now, after Thursday, I don't know. Like, I don't want to say that the Goldman Sachs indicator is going to, you know, outpass yet. But it has room to fly. So 
It doesn't have to go all the way up to 210. And then, you know, you have to wonder, too, if, if Goldman Sachs is going to rip higher, you know, to 200 or 210, does that mean she does raise rates? Uh, so I don't know. Like, once Thursday comes, you're on your own on that one. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot on that one. Uh, let's talk about Yahoo here. And this thing has just been getting pounded, not allowing the you know tax-free spinoff of the Alibaba stake. And that's actually been floating around for a while here. Uh, any interest in, uh, in Yahoo at these levels? No, because I don't play Yahoo. But I will say that it is literally sitting right on the 200-day weekly. Um, so, so you might want to look at that, oh, 200 weekly, sorry, not 200 day, 200 uh, weekly moving average. Um, it did go beneath there a few days ago and pop back up, so maybe it won't hold this time, I don't know, but it's right there. In the end, though, the chart looks really crappy, so whether or not it gets a huge bounce, I don't, I don't, I mean, I wouldn't. Hold on to it too long. <laughs> you just uh, if it gets that move up, I mean, give it an interesting level to look at. It's actually coming up on its flash crash low here, a uh, twenty nine even. But we're getting a little buyer stepped in a little bit ahead of that in the pre market here. Uh, just noticing we're getting a pop here in GW Pharma, GWPH, uh, just spiked up over 117 to 117.74. Hasn't been up there in quite a long time. Just ticked 118. Not sure what the news is. Is uh, GW Pharma something that uh, you trade at all? No, but the chart looks fantastic, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it barely flinched during this last um, crash that we had. Okay. Uh, and if it's and it, it closed at, I mean, if you're saying it's at 117, it closed around 10, like 107, basically. So that's a pretty big pop. Yeah, they uh, the they said safety profile in cannibal dial reassuring show no serious after effects so uh some good news here i uh, just alert our traders here we did get a pop to 1839 uh this stock ran into problems uh boy it was a while back back in august hit 12099 so nice pop there in gw pharma it's, there's some resistance around 120 but if it clears that it might get back to all-time highs when you see a stock pop like eight, nine, ten bucks, eleven bucks in the pre-market, I mean, I know you looked at it. You said the chart, you know, before. I mean, so you don't automatically look to the short side on something this one, or what if you were long? Not necessarily. I mean, you know, I wouldn't look to the short time if it was like very short term because the chart doesn't look great on the daily. But you know, if I was longer term, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily add right now, mm -hmm. but because you know, I'm longer term, but on a pullback, maybe you know. For a longer term, it looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, I don't. I mean, I know a lot of people like to short right when something pops a lot. But especially on a name I don't know, like this one and a bio, I, I don't tend to do that. Plus, <laughs> if you're doing it with options, it's so hard because the spread's probably huge. Yeah. Yep. Yep, you're correct on that one. Uh, FedEx has earnings tonight. Uh, one analyst is saying that lower oil prices are going to be good for the stock. Kind of just been hanging out here since the flash crash. Really, I mean, you go back since the flash crash, I don't think this thing's traded out, you know, outside of a six, seven point range. Any takes on any take on FedEx? Um, I don't know how it's going to trade for earnings, but I would say that if it does pop, uh, I don't know. I don't know, actually. Go, maybe go with it because it's pretty oversold still. And I don't, FedEx is, I don't think it's going out of business anytime soon. <laughs> 156. <laughs> but, you know. Yep. 156 looks like a good level because it, uh, it gapped down from that area on the flash crash day and then it came back up to it about four or five sessions ago. So I think six bucks away from it, though. Uh, I'd use that as a main. And. And what I would else say you got? Too, um, I would say that, you know, transport, the transportation index is looking better. So, you know. What uh, know. what ETF do you use for that? IYT. IYT. Uh, let's take a look at that. And obviously there's options on that. Uh, what, do you, what are you liking about the IYT? Yeah, it looks like it, it's, I mean, I think it's coming into resistance now. So it might have a little trouble right here. But it, it looks like it could have possibly bottomed. Okay. All right. And uh, if, it, if it can, I think it's going to hit some resistance here with the fifty-day. But if it can make a higher low, then 
What do you make of uh, Apple here? Obviously, they got the big ink over the weekend by Barron's uh, looking for 50% upside, uh, way over its uh, flash crash high here. You, you see the uh, the path being cleared uh, for new all-time highs in Apple. I, I am longer-term bullish on Apple. I think um, I think it's going to do well, uh, probably this earnings season as well, because I think a lot now is baked into it, and people have just kind of been more and more disappointed with it. Um, I also don't think anyone will get it again at 92. I could be wrong. You know, that's where the flash crash was. As for this week alone, um, the open interest show um, a potential pin of 115 or 120, so maybe in between. Um, but I think it does have room to go, actually, even this week. Rachel, what about something like GoPro? Uh, Scott Rudder was on our show yesterday, and he's saying that this it's just broken and there's nothing to do in it. Uh, have you watched GoPro, and do you have any thoughts about it? I don't watch it. I think it, it, he's right. It is completely broken. And also, I don't see how anyone's ever going to trust the CEO again. So why would, you know, like, I see no point in going into it. He, he ended the lockup early to get out. And I, I mean, how could he trust the CEO that's going to do that? But they let him out. J.P. Morgan let him out. And I, you're talking about that. That was from a while ago, right? That, uh, it was. But, I mean, they did let him out. But who wants to trust a CEO that does that? They go to and, you know, backs of people like that. Okay, good point. Another interesting stock that's kind of been a fall, fallen darling on Wall Street, Shake Shack. You know, I mean, there, it seems like this one rides on a lot of hope that it'll be something like Chipotle. But Chipotle's kind of got its own little groove where you can build your own burrito, whereas there are like a million burger joints out there. Right. I, um, I think that it's kind of, Shake Shack looks like one of those just IPOs that like, you know, gets the euphoria in the very beginning and then just kind of like drops off the, the map and... I think it looks, I mean, right now it looks like it could, it could be in a bottoming process, you know, so then it could end up going back up, you know, but then again, look at what happened to Twitter. So it still hasn't mm -hmm. really bottomed. But right now it looks like they're kind of forming a bottom. And I do think Shaq is still kind of a love stock. Um, so as long as it stays above, it's like, I think, uh, IPO price, which, you know, that kind of close. I think it might be fine actually from here. Okay. Uh, one more I'd love to get your take on. Alibaba, Barron's came out with an article over the weekend saying that the stock could go down another 50%. Uh, would you agree with that? I mean, you feel like Alibaba's got a solid strategy, it's, and then we've got all of the mystery going on with Chinese markets. What's What are your thoughts on Alibaba right now? I don't know. It's hard to say 50% from here. I, mm -hmm. I guess it could. I, I probably would say not 50%, but I don't. I wouldn't buy here either. I know people like to look at Barron's and it's fun to joke and say, oh, it's contrarian. And I don't know, maybe they did call the bottom just now. But it's not, you know, there's so much unclear with with uh, the CEO. There's just so much that's unclear. Mm -hmm. And investors now already who, who bought it, you know, from the very beginning, thinking, oh, this is going to be the darling stock, they've already been, you know, crushed. So I think that anytime it goes up, people are just like, sell and be like, I'm done, I'm done. And so uh, it's just hard. It's hard to say that this is a long term investment right now. We got a question coming out of the chat here. What about McDonald's for the short term? MCD. Uh, McDonald's for short term. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks like it looks pretty decent right here. Um, you know, it's kind of stuck. Right, it's kind of stuck. It keeps hitting that wall of like around ninety seven fifty and just getting smashed back down. But if we can clear that. I think, yeah, it has some room to go up. We're on the line with Rachel Shasha. She's a trader and blogger at Sassy Options. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the psychology of the markets here. I mean, people seem to be a little tired out there from the flash crash, and now we got this consolidation period. Wow, are you okay there, Rachel? What do you got going on there? Um, you Wait, I'm losing you, I think. No, I'm sorry, because I, I oh, just heard yeah, the yeah. sirens in the background there. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Psychology of the market here. I mean, is the buy-the-dip mentality been broken yet? I think it has. I think people are tired for the most part. I mean, I'm tired. You know, it, we haven't had this kind of volatility in so long, and I think it's wearing people out. And, and especially if anyone, you know, I really would say to anyone who is over-trading and trying to, like, revenge trade, just... Stop, like stop, take a look at yourself and what you're doing because 
you know, m- most traders have been there and done that, and it's not going to work, and it's just going to wear you out even more. You know, take a step back, see what's going on. There will be plenty more opportunities. But I think people are getting worn out. I think by the dip is not as present anymore. I think actually people are getting super bearish, if anything. And I know that that sometimes can be contrarian, but I don't necessarily think it's contrarian this time. You know, when we're in this raging bull market and every dip gets bought really quickly, then yeah, it's contrarian. But this time... I, I mean, I hate to use that cliche term, but this time is different. You know, I, I'm not saying we're not going to go back to highs. I, I do think we are going to end up going back to highs, but I'm not. Th- but I think the question is not over. So I think, yeah, I think people are just getting tired. And so what's going to end up happening is people are going to get tired and worn out. And then when it's actually time to rally, I don't know. Some people will already be washed out. Uh, we got a question here on a stock that had some huge volume yesterday, and that's YNDX here. Could you pull that up on the chart for us and uh, perhaps give you, yeah. give us your take on that one? It is Yanadex here. Had a, been very quiet. Got a nice pop yesterday. Any chance for any follow-through? Um, I, I'm assuming it was on news, so I don't know what that was, but I do think there's probably follow-through to maybe around 1350 ish um, maybe even higher, but I wouldn't. I, I mean, I would maybe if you wanted to play it for like a quick scalp, but I I wouldn't I mean, hold this too long because again, then you have all those people who've just been crushed in it who want to sell. Yeah, overhead supply. Uh, we talk about that a lot. Uh, you know, looking um, across the globe here, uh, the Russian ETF. We haven't heard to oh, actually uh, Chris is saying that's the Russian search engine a stub so we'll take a look at the Russian index uh, RSX any thoughts on that no. quiet look at that thing very um, quiet yes uh, it looks okay I mean it looks like it could be trying to form a little bit of a bottom here all right um, when we're going to let you go here, just one final question here. We have the, uh, you know, the Fed announcement coming up on Thursday. Uh, are you going to try and put any positions on ahead of that during it, or just kind of wait to see when the dust settles? I haven't decided, to be honest. I, I don't know. Okay. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. Yeah. Rachel Shasha, she's a trader and blogger at Sassy Options. She joins us about once a month to give us a, a look at her options trading, trading strategies and on the macro of the markets. Thanks a lot for coming on, Rachel. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for having me.